I mean, you're machining all the corn to on the shafts, all that sort of thing. Fantastic, and hence this whole thing about the ability to be able to see it. Wonderful thing. Thank you very much. Hello, sir. What have we got here? This is the full scale question, gentlemen. It was built in Charles Wilson's last year in 2007. Wonderful, great to see you. Thank you very much. And without these guys coming and supporting our show, we get nothing to see. So thank you. Now, does that present problems in, in the making of it? Being smaller is that easier? Is that more difficult? Yes, I see, because it's in simple physics, really. Everything is so much smaller. Wonderful to see. Thank you very much. Now, I was told as you came around that this is actually, this isn't metal at all, but this is metal, but the majority of it is actually wood. And, I mean, well, without, had I not known that, you wouldn't know. It's just incredible. So is this what they call scratch build? Fantastic. I mean, I think that falls into the category of labour of love. <laughs> yes. Keep the woodworm off it. Yeah. Now, with the possible exception of my friend on the end, you guys, we're going to have a whistle blow just for our friends along the front here. So, on the count of three, boys and girls, ready? One, two, three, go! that without your commitment, your enthusiasm, uh, and your transport, we don't get to see these wonderful engines. So, on behalf of us all, thank you so, so much. Where's the chauffeur, the little Audrey? Uh, I've got to get hold of this man. Now, come here, you. <laughs> come up here, come up here. You are such a star. You are so committed. Helping us with our charity steering. Yesterday and today. So, so grateful for that. Thank you very, very much. Tell us a little bit about what we've got here. It's a ransom that we take a from uh, 1903. And uh, spent all its working life in Essex. Bought new by a farmer in Coppersfield in Essex. Uh, Wonderful to see, and of course, ranch and being synonymous so much with the whole agricultural industry. The then make it thrashing boxes, all benches, all sorts of things. And of course, as time went on, they evolved into more advanced stuff, uh, etc. Just to give us an idea, I mean, the, the presentation of this engine. So your day at the show starts at what time? Uh, you normally get about up to R647 and um, do a bit of polishing, cleaning out, getting it ready, get it to get about half eight or something like that. Um, and then um, sort of, well, I'm assuming uh, once it's all up and running about then to it and then he can sit back a bit and uh, it looks after itself uh, a lot better. I noticed the word polishing features got a lot of it. And of course that is synonymous with a fantastic presentation. It is absolutely stunning. So thank you so much both for this 
as well as for the charity. You're all right now, I'm great to see you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, look at this for a feast for the eyes. Please tell me about the feeling. <laughs> they all go so shy on me, but you should be so proud. I mean, no, I wish one had one ahead of me. Most of the people around this ring absolutely uh, agree with Andy. Which I went so, to three years ago. And I went to what have we got here? The smaller one last week, actually. Six tons of gold, I believe. This is not going to be my thing. Yeah, it's right. Well, I, 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 I mean, amazing to think that we've got this in this fantastic uh, condition, having had over no. 100 no. years no. of being no. pressed no. and no. worked no. and worked and no. worked. No. One or the other, yeah, you're all right. I don't know what you're saying. So that's what that's going to be designed to monitor somehow belt driven or something like that. Yeah, there you go. Now the principle with the, uh, the Canadian for American engines is somewhat different to the UK engines as far as it goes. So tell us a little bit about that. Sorry, I was just going to say whether you have to say it all there, because you are so lucky. I mean, most of the people around this room would be green with that. So well done you, because you have got it in a stunning condition. Lovely to see. I suppose I asked for this. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it just takes my breath away. How long, we're allowed to ask that, how long will it take to get this fabulous thing? Three years. Gone off. He's gone all shy, you see. They ought to be so proud of things like this, but they don't like things that are going all a bit squeamish. So, can you tell us anything about this, sir? What makes a steamroll? I think this is going to be hard work. This is the sort of interview I really enjoy. Can you tell us about the net? This is part of the 12 tons. Age wise, what are we talking about? A little bit older than me. So in his 40s then. No, 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 I mean, lovely to see in his working clothes. I mean, smashing to see the fantastic restored, but just as nice to see them in their unrestored state. Although mechanically, obviously, this has to be absolutely A1. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it's 1926, by the way. 1926. Well, you're wearing well if you're 1926. <laughs> Thank you very much, girls. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a one, two, three, go!
Hunting Beach. Now, as the first row of lock, we'll talk to one or two of the guys from the second row. Now, I've got to remember who I talked to and who I didn't. So, sir, tell us a little bit about this fabulous up and round. Your steam lorry, I mean, just, oh, wonderful. In terms of uh, the sort of lifetime of these trucks, when did they finish making steam lorries? Um, they were made until the early 30s. So, uh, I mean, so this one would be very much at the end of the steam lorry idea. And, I mean, how long have you owned this? Wonderful. So it had come out of work or it was scrapped or done in the story. Well, I mean, and in investment terms, I mean, it was a, it was a very clever day's work. But, and um, um, in terms of how long have you earned it? Fifteen years. Well, a tribute to you, wonderfully turned out, beautiful engine. And have you come very far? It's a nice local engine. Wonderful to see. Thank you very much, sir. I know he's a bit shy, so we did well to get that out of him. Thank you. <laughs> Can we have a quick word before you set off or not? Only a quick one. Tell me what we've got to do here. Fantastic. So this has been round the world, really. And I mean, that's very much British engineering at the time was the pinnacle. There's nobody doing a better job of steam than has been done in England. And they went all round the world. I think we've got one here from Tasmania as well. So, uh, I mean, did you have anything to do with the reinforcing? It's a credit to you and lovely to see. Thank you very much. Now I was caught out yesterday because I thought, where's all the steam? And there was no steam. Because we've got a very early diesel here. Who can I talk to about this? Hello, sir, by the way. Shall we talk to you first? We'll wrap Sir, tell me about your splendid engine. Wonderful, and thank you so much for going through that story again, because you were kind enough to tell me yesterday, but we've got a huge audience again, a different lot of, of uh, spectators, so thank you for telling me, and an absolutely fabulous turned that end. Lovely to see. Thank you very much indeed. You're the only one. Really? Yes. Well, we are very 
privilege with all these angels. So thank you very much for bringing it, sir. I'm determined to get to the bottom of this. Because it came round and I thought, that's funny, there's no, uh, no seeds, no chimney. So we have here a very early 1936 Adrian Barford motorola. Of course, Adrian Barford, very famous for their rollers. And of course, as time goes on, they advance with the, with the whole thing with internal. So we're running on diesel. And all these boys here, they, they don't mind you. They, they, they don't know you. They talk to you and things like that. Most of them. <laughs> well, I mean, this is every bit as fascinating as the season because in historical terms, this is, this is an absolute sort of after this. There's no loss of the economy. Yes, absolutely. And again, because of your commitment, your enthusiasm, we get to see you. So thank you very, very much for being here. And I mean, I like it. I think it's a wonderful thing. And as I to say, historically, it is very prominent in many of the world. But essentially, a modern role of the very similar to this is the basic principle. So you get to have a lie in in the morning, you just jump out of bed, push the button, and off you go. Jump out of bed, get the end out, just bring it over to nearly have a heart attack. Um, then try again, then try again, then have a cup of tea, and then normally it goes. Good for you. Do you let the co pilot have a go now and again? I try the old time. Good for you. Good for you. Does he have to ask permission? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for bringing it. I'm in mean, lovely condition and a very interesting machine. Thank you very much. My goodness. Just look at this. Fantastic to see. And as I said earlier, Without these guys, without their commitment, we don't have a show. So thank you very, very much indeed. We're going to finish with... With what? What is it? Hello, sir. Hello. Tell me what we got here. The 1902 Maybelline War Pro Roller. And, I mean, what we're towing is very much synonymous with what with this was using in its working life. Yeah, it's a tar flapper, 1926, I think. So basically, pour out the uh, tar, then throw chippings on it to give you a, a weatherproof um, Road service. I mean, this, I, I would hazard a guess to say, is probably rarer than the engine. Yeah, it's not many of them. The blows that own has got two more, and I think he's doing a fourth in restoration. I mean, it very much sets the engine off, doesn't it? It sort of puts the whole thing in context. Yeah, it seems to roll up perfectly. Great to see, and lovely to see you bringing it here to us. I know you're a big supporter of our show, so thank you very much once again for turning out with us. Right, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause for these fabulous engines. Really wonderful to see. We didn't get to blow their whistle, did we? I mean, we, we've heard these whistles blow, and of course, several uses for the, the whistle. The plowing engines, they would, uh, that was their way of communicating with each other, either end of the field, you could uh, tell your 
the other engine that uh, the plough was about to come to the other end to run, and two whistles came from the other end to turn it round, and ready to go back round again. So the whistle, although it's a table device, has many, many uses. What a display of steam. Absolutely wonderful to see these things, gentlemen. We are so, so privileged to see them. Thank you, guys. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Without your commitment, we don't get to see these engines. So, absolutely wonderful. Come on, come on, So, in all its glory. Now, the rest of our day consists of tractors next. So we're just going to have five minutes as the... Um, Engines move out of the ring and then we're on to tractors. Tractors and implements as well as just tractors. So quite a display there, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very great privilege to uh, talk to some of these guys. I know one or two of them are a bit shy. They're a bit like to hide their light under a bushel and don't like to talk about their engines. But my goodness, some fascinating stories attached to these engines. Great to see and thank you guys once again. So the rest of our afternoon consists of tractors next, prams and bicycles, that's at uh, 5 to 2, in all their regalia, mainly towing um, carriages, carts, farm implements, etc. But turned out in an absolutely pristine fashion. Some of these horses that are coming around this afternoon, the horse grasses, the general regalia, it is just absolutely stunning to see. That parade takes place at um, 3 o'clock, and I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend that. Following on from that, we have our motorcycle parade. Then at 4 o'clock, we have Land Rovers. And we finish the day with our car parade. I do hope you're all enjoying the uh, afternoon with us. The uh, Hollywell Show is certainly living up to its reputation. That's a fabulous show and we're so pleased that uh, it went really well yesterday. One or two little tips and uh, bits of information for you. Uh, please do be careful with vehicles moving around the show. £175 pounds last night for the air ambulance. So that is a fabulous amount of money that we've raised from charity. We so, so appreciate the um, input that the steam engine drivers have given us over that and we very, very much appreciate their help. Part of my job is promoting other shows in and around the area and it was a great pleasure for me to remind you and advertise the Kettering Vintage Rally and Steam Bond. That's at Cranford, 26 to 27 of um, September. A lovely show, very much based on the same sort of theme as we've got here. Lots of steam, lots of lorries tractors, all sorts of amusements, and a very good show. A pair of tires on the front of the Wolfberg Landau, used for commercial purposes. If you want to have a wedding, and you want to be carried off to the church in this vehicle, then uh, look on the website for Wolfberg Tires, and they will do the job for you. Very experienced pair of working horses, and his groom there is the very experienced owner, Elspeth Ross of the Wolfberg Shires, with her partner David Wallace. Followed up with the the hay tether with John Boy there. Hang on, we've got a rich chain off there, my fucker. Again, you notice there's a, a chain is dropped off the ridge. And the mayor has stood still, no panic, and we need this for working animals. So that the forks behind would go through the swath of grass, 
and chuck it up so that the air could get in under and that would dry your hay. That would need to be done two or three times before it would be dry enough to, uh, to come in. Wendy Tumor Harlow with the ladies corn. Magnificent turnout there. Look at that beautiful harness. The lightweight vehicle, Eversley Shires, and uh, Wendy closing the competition. And there are competitions for the ladies' cars up and down the country, and quite popular becoming. The carriage there that was made popular by Queen Victoria. And uh, that is a makeup of all sorts of bits and pieces. Roger wouldn't mind me saying that uh, it's made up of junk, if you like, and uh, uh, all sorts of bits and pieces from various, uh, I think there's even some summer nuts and bolts on there. I can remember, and a uh, very smart little turnout with the traditional cob. Little Oscar there, uh, around about 32, 33. Then we have the, the four horse team. John Goodwin from the Isle of Sheffy. John again just returned from Norfolk with uh, successful wins under his belt in pairs and single and the uh, the four horse team um, we have what we call the the two wheelers which are the closest to the drag the drag being a bottle drag and would have carried somewhere in the region of a ton maybe ton and a half of uh, crates of beer around for breweries and uh, you can see the cooperative funeral care logo on the side there for the sponsorship and uh, the two wheelers at the back there, the engine, um, do a lot of work. And we have the two leaders in front. The leaders are normally slightly smaller, but uh, but brave, bold animals. They're at the front, but they have each other to balance off. And what I mean by that is, obviously, they have uh, their mates uh, either to the left or right. Whereas the greys behind, the tandem of David Curtis from Middle and First Room. <laughs> the, uh, the lead horse of the tandem pair there. He has no one to balance with. He's out on his own. Then we have Kevin Morris. Kevin from the West Midlands with his the plow team there. And the plow team, they're a young team. They, uh, they haven't been together all that long, so they're getting used to situations like this. Kevin, an experienced horseman, and the plowman would have been expected in the working day to plow one acre a day with a pair of horses. That was uh, about the limit for uh, a day's work, was to plow one acre. That's where the, the term acre came from, was the amount that one man and a pair of horses could plow. So there's, uh, there's the plow and the plow team. Next we have the mower with Malcolm and the wind is getting out. That is the finger mower, often first well.